Michio Extra Dimensions is front and center in the scientific world. No longer just science fiction. I want to understand how it works in string theory and fundamental physics and then potentially in cosmology in, in, uh, in large extra dimensions. So how significant is this in our understanding? Let me tell you a story. When I was a child growing up in San Francisco area, I used to visit the Japanese tea garden and to visit the carp swimming just beneath the lily pads in a two-dimensional pond. I used to spend hours looking at them. They would swim forward, backward, left and right, their eyes were to the side, and they couldn't see me. I was in the third dimension. I was in hyperspace. They were totally unaware that there was a universe beyond their pond. And then I thought, well, what happens if I reach down and grab one of the fish, lift the fish up? Maybe that fish was a scientist, and the scientist would say, bah, humbug, science fiction, there's no world of up. Up does not exist. Well, I would grab this scientist, lift them up in the world of up, hyperspace, the third dimension. What would he see? He would see beings breathing without water, a new law of biology. Beings moving without fins, a new law of physics. And then I would put the fish back into the pond. What kind of stories would he tell? Well, today we physicists believe, we cannot prove it yet, but we are the fish. We spend all our life in three dimensions. We go forward, backward, left, right, up, down, thinking that anything beyond our pond, anything beyond our little puny universe is science fiction. We say, bah, humbug. We can't say that anymore because the concept of higher dimensions now is the biggest game in town. We live in a three-dimensional world. We see pieces. We see the electromagnetic force. We see gravity. We see nuclear force. Little pieces of this unified field theory. We bring them together. Now we have the theory of the quantum theory, the theory of the small, the theory of atoms. We have the theory of Einstein, the theory of space, time, relativity, but they don't fit together until you go into hyperspace and then they fit together beautifully. So when they fit together, what does that mean? Well, today we see the world as is very broken. <clears throat> we see pieces of it. But at the beginning of time, when the universe was first created, that's when the crystal existed in its perfect form. We call it the super force. A single super force held this crystal together. But then we had the Big Bang, which shattered this crystal, giving us the shattered universe of today. When you look around you and you see the different forces, mountains, clouds, planets, it's broken. We live in a horribly broken world. It turns out that if you go to a 13-dimensional universe, a 15-dimensional universe, it's unstable. Particles would prefer to collapse down to 10 or 11 mm. dimensions because the mathematics shows that self-consistency is important. They're unstable. Universes in, in 29 dimensions are simply unstable. Strings can only vibrate in 10 dimensions, but uh, in the 90s, there was a revolution that, that it turns out that if you add an 11th dimension, one more dimension, then membranes can exist. Not just little strings, but beach balls and golf balls can vibrate. And perhaps our universe is a membrane, in which case perhaps some of these dimensions could be large, perhaps even infinite. So once you go from the 10 dimensional world of strings, where these dimensions are very tiny, and go to an 11 dimensions, then you're talking about a whole new picture, a picture whereby some of these dimensions could be huge, and that may even explain why gravity is so weak. Gravity is a very weak force. Perhaps gravity oozes, oozes, escapes into these higher dimensions, and that's why gravity is so weak. This so-called hierarchy problem, which gravity may be 10 to the 39th or 10 to the 40th times smaller than the electromagnetic gravity, uh, the electromagnetic force, it seems, uh, it seems that these two are fundamental forces to have such a vast difference in scale doesn't seem to make sense. That's right, I could put sheets of paper on the table, comb my hair, and you do this in elementary school, pick up the sheets of paper. Well, I just defied gravity. The Earth weighs six trillion trillion kilograms. I defied six trillion trillion kilograms with a comb by picking up pieces of paper with the electric force. That's how weak gravity is. And perhaps these higher dimensions, 
is due to the fact that space oozes, a gravity oozes into these higher dimensions. Now these, if we look at the possibility of these large extra dimensions, which you said might be infinite in size, are we limited to these uh, extra six or seven dimensions other than the three we see, or might there be a vast number of infinite number of, of, of dimensions as well as each one being infinite in size? How, how many infinities are we dealing with here? Well, we think that 11 is the upper limit. Uh, some people actually have looked at 12 dimensions. In 12 dimensions, we have two times. But in 13 dimensions, the universe becomes really unstable. I've looked at 13. It's, it's a horrible dimension to work with mathematically. But one thing is maybe we can experimentally see some of these uh, objects, because if, so if a universe is hovering just above you, the, it is invisible to you. Light goes underneath. And that may explain dark matter. Dark matter is invisible, it has gravity. We, the Hubble Space Telescope has given us maps sure. of this invisible matter. Maybe it's nothing but an ordinary galaxy hovering just above us in another dimension. Mm. So perhaps dark matter, which makes up most of the matter of the universe, is nothing but ordinary matter of a galaxy hovering in a parallel universe mm. just above us.